Hey everyone, welcome back to Ender Lilies, and this is the last video we're going to be doing. Just picking up this last fragment here, and we're going to move to take on the final boss now that we have everything we need to actually get the true ending. So I'm going to be doing some last minute enhancing here. By the way, you need to get uh, five spirits to level six in order to get one of the achievements, and you can do that pretty easily if you picked up everything that I showed you last video. Now to re-equip the appropriate spirits, hopefully not die. Unfortunately, that's actually going to be a problem for us. Because, well... I forgot to switch out my relics from my exploration uh, set to my final boss set, so, uh... This is gonna be interesting. I don't know exactly when I realized I brought the wrong set. But I think it was about here when I realized I wasn't gaining any life back. I actually debated on whether or not to keep this footage, but it, I decided to decide to just show the consequences of what happens when I have an incomplete setup for this boss. Yeah, I know there are better ways to tackle the Blighted Lord than the one I use, but this is basically how I beat him last time, and I to stick with what works for me, or what I think works for me. Oh well, the next game I'm doing will involve a lot of customization, and I think I'll be more diligent about showing that off. Yeah, see, this is going not well. Well, at least not as good as last time. too special to say here, we're just kind of doing what we did last time. You know, I can't really say what my favorite Metroidvania final boss would be at this point. Because, strangely enough, final bosses just don't feel like they're the strength of these games for the most part. I mean, Droll Rabo uh, Mastro was uh, fun in Blaster Master Zero 2.
And uh, fighting Lucifer could be tense uh, in the Card Chronicles too. But anyway, we've taken out the Blighted Lord. But this time we're protected. And those are the spirits of the eight other lilies. And the Blighted Lord is the only boss that has four phases, if you're doing it right, of course. And it has some attacks, like this meteor shower that I didn't dodge correctly, and it'll still spawn minions, but as you beat it up, there's more of a chance that its attacks will just fail, like it won't actually do things. Whoops. Yeah, that's the problem with this D-pad. I really didn't want to do that. Oh, this is gonna be unfortunate. Okay, so now we're going to do this correctly. Yeah, see, I'm set up for exploration. Okay, now we're ready to get back in there. You know, one of the questions that people have is the origin of this Blighted Lord. Well, the previous Blighted Lord, anyway. Because this Blighted Lord is obviously based on the White Priestess and uh, taking control of uh, her power. But the one that's mentioned earlier in the game is in the Catacombs is a bit of a mystery. And based on what we've seen so far, it's possible the original might have been, like whatever leader the Ancients once had, because the Blighted Army that attacked the Kingdom of Land's End was made up of the Ancients that had been taken by the Blight. By the way, a bit earlier, you know, Shortly after the game play out and people first started fighting uh, this boss, some guy uh, proposed as their idea to make this boss more interesting was to, as you go through the fight, uh, to knock pieces off of the uh, Blighted Lord, you know, have it be giant for the first parts of its boss fight, but after you knock it down a bunch, 
the uh, last phase of the uh, final boss would actually be the uh, White Priestess. And uh, my response to that was, Hey, you just accidentally reinvented the final boss of La Mulana. And the guy was like, well, I guess I need to play La Mulana now. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a game that had a strong final boss, La Mulana. A Metroidvania that had something like that. Yeah, in both the original and the remake. Soundtrack is still great, though, whatever I might have to say about the actual mechanics of this boss. There is a, just a huge difference between knowing what you're doing and uh, where you're going. Because my full achievement uh, save file is something like uh, 18 hours. But uh, this playthrough, uh, it probably isn't going to even top 11 hours. It'll be like just short of that. And it's not like achievement hunting in this game is especially onerous. Yeah, 18 hours to get all of the achievements and something like 16 to finish the game uh, with the true ending. Okay, we're back to this phase without uh, any muss or fuss. And we're just gonna give the Blighted Lord a good old knockabout. Will I actually be able to dodge a projectile this time? Yes! Okay, yeah. It also adds, like, that slow grab attack, which I have never been hit by even once. And as you can see, um, outside of certain attacks uh, that uh, the Blighted uh, Lord is now actually weeping as the White Priestess starts to exert some control again. Yeah, we have some questions about the lore, but uh, it's not like we can hire Bonte Vidya to do uh, anything about that. That 
that's it. And I'm just gonna let the rest play out. And that's it for Ender Lilies. The curse has been uh, broken, the blighted souls have been freed. And man, 
other protagonists of these sorts of things need to step up their game because little girls get things done. So, final verdict on Ender Lilies? Play Ender Lilies! If you feel it's worth it to you to pay up now, that's great. If you want to wait for a sale, that's okay too. But play Ender Lilies. I've already given a lot of my thoughts on this uh, game already. And I said already twice. And the one last question is what exactly the Reign of Blight was, because it came in that last cutscene after she described uh, her encounter with the uh, clone uh, lilies. And my best guess right now is that the Blight actually weaponized the sorrow of the White Priestess. I mean, it's not like there's going to be an Ender Lily's Perfect Works as far as I know, so <laughs> that's what I got, sorry. But yeah, this game has a lot going for it, minus the final boss, of course. You got atmosphere, you got soundtrack, you got gameplay, you got reasonable difficulty. And we're going to be waiting through this because there is a post credit scene, plus there's one last thing we can get after we get the true ending. Yeah, I kind of had to turn the song of this volume, yeah, the vo volume of this song down, just to be sure it wouldn't interrupt whatever I had to say at the last moments. But yeah, as far as tone for, you know, this kind of, I guess you would call it gloomy fantasy, I think this is really what I want to see more of, aside from the, you know, regular constant bleakness you can sometimes get, because you go from Dark Souls, you go from that to, like, Dead Cells and that sort of thing, and it's all the same tone. It is literally monotonous. But, and you get this, which, even though it takes place in uh, this kind of setting, it's, you know, rather warmer sort of game than the others. finally get Lily's smile. Well, grown-up Lily's, too. The big remaining question is who exactly is talking to her at, in that post credit sequence? It's either the White Priestess or the Umbral Knight who's still tagging along with her. And normally the title screen is black until you get beat the true ending, in which case you get that background. And one last thing, after you get the true ending, go back to this room and get this. This is a zero slot relic. And I think Lily is going to be fine after all this. I mean, she looks healthier then than she did during the final boss fight. So this relic allows you to have your pre-blighted uh, form back. And I guess that's it for Ender Lilies. I'll be seeing you next time when we do Armored Core. See you then.